Okay, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside again. I just thought I would um, do a little bit of a bonus video. Um, I may as well start taking this uh, clock movements off the clock dial. Uh, the, the what's his name again? Keep it a mess. Uh, Thomas Thomas Kefford. So I'm going to take uh, the clock movements to pieces. Right. First thing I'd probably start with is I'd pop the bell off. Okay, again, we put them in these tubs and we number them up so that we, you know, we know which is which. Right, your bell will come off there. The next thing I'd do is, you can see this has been put on quite crudely. Uh, they, they've been positioned with these um, Obviously these are supposed to be sort of, you know, movement sort of hooks and what they do is they'd actually keep it stable on the um, on the seat board of the clock. Seat board being this, and as you can see again, pretty crude stuff. Uh, we will use a couple of wooden dowels, we will drill a hole through a couple of wooden dial, da, da, uh, dowels rather and we'll do that. Uh, sometimes we'll use you know pieces of round uh, brass uh, bar that's what we'll do but you know much better than that let's put it that way anyway so I'll get them off again anyway so the next thing we do is we get this this uh, fishing line off I don't particularly like it I think we've discussed this before uh, my opinion uh, I, I, I find uh, natural well, line must be sell now is far superior that's my opinion right so whip all the line off fishing line keep that for me a fishing trip shock leader so obviously you've got to disengage the um, click okay and then obviously we'd cut that off now what I want you to see in this if you can can you see the way that gut line has started to come come out of the spool itself now what I would do in that case is I would cut that off from there because we have had in the past the actual small piece that gets left in when the gut line's been changed and it's been left inside the spool it's actually come out and jammed the uh, the spool so if you can get that out there you go get that out pull that out okay what I will do is I will wrap that up I will wrap this line up I won't use it for fishing <laughs> and wrap it up like this and then I will cut that into small pieces into the bin so that obviously when it goes to the tip it doesn't uh, end up getting unraveled and wrapped wrap around animals or something like that you know a little bit conscientious that way so that would go like that probably wouldn't anyway because it's quite thick but it doesn't do any harm does it There you go. Second one, similar thing. If you can't. Not in good shape this really, I mean. Easy. 
and so you've got your these are your pulley wheels obviously pieces of wood you throw them in the bin um, this is your seat board and the other pulley wheel is somewhere Yeah, so your pulley wheels are that type of, of affair. Right, so we're getting this mess off. I honestly don't know why people use this stuff, I really don't, I mean, it's just, again, my opinion, but I think, in amount of experience I have, I think it's pretty justifiable, if I'm honest. As I say to you about this gut line, I mean, we've actually seen, uh, I've seen some really eminent clockmakers who I would never dream that they actually tend to have seen them with this stuff. I don't know. Okay, again, if you can, try and get the butt line out. So this is what we're left with, clock movements, gut line, um, moved off um, and as we can see I think um, the, this clock has possibly had a little bit of trouble in the past with the um, you know the rack and snail, um, the rack and snail lever that this is the thing that indicates um, where your, where this lands this will indicate how many teeth uh, on the on the rack itself are gonna sort of count if you like you see as you can go around the snail has you know 12 uh, slopes if you like coming round and that's it but it looks like it's come off at some time it's just been going round and round and it's caused this tracking I think um, that's the way that I, at this stage of the game I would be taking photographs of it okay and also it's probably well worthwhile is marking this type of stuff up now i would use you know a light punch and use a dot situation it looks much neater in my opinion um, but obviously you've got to be a bit careful you don't punch it and break a tooth off or something like that so obviously come and also don't don't punch near the edges or something like that i mean just whichever way you, you you're comfortable with to mark it up but i think the good thing is to mark it up um, this is just going to be a short 15 minute video because I really you know I've, I've, I'll have customers coming through my door very shortly um, but yeah that's a pretty pretty nice movement it is what it is I mean these we'll be getting new rack hooks I mean it was obviously screwed straight into the uh, seat board that way uh, but all in all it doesn't look too bad 
and at this stage obviously and I think we've seen this movement before take these off put them back to the customer um, on the back of your movement there obviously you know your, 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 your crutch wire snapped off the foot we'll be putting a brand new one on um, that looks like it's been hit with an hammer that there needs bushing now bushes like that really we'll be making them on the lathe maybe uh, room for another video there uh, but that's what we'll be we'll be doing that there looks like it's been punched at some time so again that'll be getting taken out bushes will be getting made probably for this clock on the lathe i mean we may as well i mean we do we do get them bush we do get bushes as i say you buy them in packs and whatever you are unless you order them individually which becomes very expensive um but we just we just find the ones we make work far better for us to be fair i mean i've had clocks that run for a few days and and then and then we've put these bushes in that you buy and then we, we make them i mean don't ask me why i don't know I, I really couldn't answer that question i mean the other thing as well when you've seen this type of thing of punching you really need to play pay close attention to the pinions because the, the probabilities are they're going to be grooved uh, and then you may have to take them down a lot where it gets to the stage where you've got to uh, you know you may as well put a new new pinion in uh, you know you may as well cut it off and put a new pinion in because the whole plan with grandfather clocks as you can imagine is that they've got to you know friction is, is, is going to be the thing that stops it now if you get any problems down at this bottom end here whereby there's a bit of friction or it's not working right i mean there's going to by the time with the torque and one thing or another at this top end here there's going to be nothing and so your, your clock is going to stop um that's pretty much it i mean you want to tell the age of a grandfather clock i mean you can get a great book by uh, brian uh, looms i think and it, uh, there's a few of them actually and it gives you sort of you know the 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 um the pillars and stuff you can sort of get a good age of the clock you can match that up with the the clock maker himself and then you can sort of see roughly where this clock is uh, and, and does everything correspond um other things you're going to check on a grandfather clock are obviously your pallets check that the pallets are okay because if the pallets are, are pretty worn out uh, you're going to have a very shallow amplitude should we say your pendulum swinging from side to side it's going to be very very shallow i mean a little tiny and as you can imagine it's not going to take much to stop it is it you know a little you know someone walking across the floor or something is going to stop it um they're just the things you know you can see right off the back really when you're doing a job i mean this clock yeah you know quite a lot of bushing really on that i mean i'd, I'd pretty much say the whole back plate is very suspect i mean i probably being honest um it's actually a five pillar movement as well just noticed we've got five pillars uh, another rarity and uh, it's not a, not as often I mean, it's not rare but it, you know you don't see it very often but yeah i mean again it'll be thoroughly cleaned mainly by hand actually mainly by hand um, and then you know it'll be uh, everything will be checked out but i think yeah and as i say if you've got a bush that's gone on the, on the back check the front as well make sure that your bush is okay there i mean when you when you're rebushing a clock you, if you put your your pinion back in you'll sort of have a lean of, a, of about three or four degrees maybe and that's enough that's enough either way and obviously you want a little bit of end shake i mean all these things are you know i've been doing it for quite a while and so it's pretty much judgment for me um i can imagine we, we do get through quite a lot of clocks over the year um so you know we, we we're pretty successful we get the odd one back now and again and you know but it's like everything in life in it where, where, where you're providing a service you will get the odd thing back there's not much you can do about that uh you've just got to get it re, re, uh, do it do it get on with it make sure the customer's kept happy make sure you know you do do the job make sure you find out what it is um what's caused the problem but yeah so I'll make another video at some point and uh, that'll be to do with me actually stripping the movement down as i say i need to get set up i'm 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get pushed for time now. It's getting on for sort of it's quarter past ten now. So any minute now there'll be customers coming through our door. Uh, so that's pretty much it on that particular movement. Just thought I'd show this. This I'm d doing this. I know we've done videos before with grandfather clock movements but the thing is is I mean this is particularly for a customer who's paying it he, he is very interested on in how all this is sorted out so we're gonna uh, we're gonna have these videos on anyway this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside uh, if you like my videos please give me a like a thumbs up and please subscribe uh, I'm putting all these videos now in sections so you'll be able to you know have a lot of videos and they'll run on to each other sort of clock dials clock movement you know that type of thing so hopefully they'll be of interest anyway have a great day thanks this is john from clock repairs merseyside